What would you do if a million dollar deal fell into your lap? The upside was there, but there's no such thing as a deal without risk. Would you do the deal? Would you find investors? Would you say, uh, this is, this is too rich for my blood and pass it off to another investor? Maybe you're a newbie and you don't feel like you have the skills to shepherd a deal like this. Risk often leads to fear and fear can stop us in our tracks. This is where courage comes into play. Mark Twain wrote that courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, but it's not the absence of fear. Today on the Land.MBA podcast, Dave and I are going to discuss how courage can propel your business to a whole new level. going on today mr howard another day in paradise my friend paradise huh is it paradise weather in connecticut yet we're not talking weather oh we always talk that was weather. last year's land.mba podcast we break the tradition <laughs> <laughs> spring the nice weather's coming spring has sprung although i do live in the northeast so it's still <laughs> It's a cold spring. All the green behind me. That's what's yeah. happening. Here. I see that sun reflecting off that uh, cr that that chromium dome of yours. <laughs> Be careful, you'll get a suntan, brother. <laughs> so I am wearing my Led Zeppelin T-shirt today uh, because uh, it felt like you know, given our topic, uh, the song "The Battle of Evermore" is playing in my head. <laughs> <laughs> because today we are talking about, drum roll please, courage, 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 you're like, come on guys, this is the land business, why are we talking about courage, it seems so dramatic, and yeah, yet, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's probably one of the biggest tools in our tool belt, because one of our biggest obstacles is fear, Mm -hmm. And we need to figure out how to face those fears and just do it. Courage is not the absence of fear, but it is continuing to take action in the face of fear, to pick yourself back up after mistakes and keep going. And what helps you keep going is an energy that's larger than your fear. And how do you create that energy that's larger than your fear? Well, it's a whole nother podcast, but knowing your why. Your why has got to be strong when you're going through that valley or you're doubting or you're, you know, you're, you're, you're holding back maybe on doing a deal or spending a lot of money on marketing, et cetera. But I'll let you go deeper on that, Howard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Winston Churchill had a great quote. He said, you don't judge a man by how high he jumps. You judge a man by how high he bounces back after he falls. <laughs> so, uh, to, you know, acting in the face of fear, you, you may not do it. It may not work. You may fail, but you don't fail. You know, the other quote from Churchill, which I loved, and I'm not going to, I'm going to butcher it right now, but, uh, something like failure is not the end. Failure is, uh, oh, I'm, I'm totally butchering it. I can't remember it, but he had a great one on, on failure too. Uh, I'll take your word that one. yeah, take my word on that one. Uh, so, uh, pause and let you look it up. <laughs> yeah. You can give me, yeah, exactly. So, uh, we all have our experiences and we've all faced fear and we've all hopefully at some point acted in the face of fear and there is no better way to conquer fear than through action but it takes energy um, to me fear is resistance resistance is like an electrical circuit you know it's ohms versus amperage if your own if your resistance is greater than your amperage there's no connect the circuit doesn't work the amperage has to be greater to overcome the resistance in the con in the conductive material material and the copper wire or whatever it is, or else you're not going to get anything done. And so you've got to find that source of, of energy, which is your why. But I'll tell you the most uh, visceral lesson in my life of conquering fear was actually 
I was at the basic school in the Marine Corps, and we had great names for courses, things like the endurance course and the confidence course. So this particular day, we were on the confidence course, and there was one particular obstacle that was called Stairway to Heaven. And it's this massive ladder made out of logs that just went straight up into the sky. And the higher it went, the further apart the logs were spaced. And the logs were big enough that I couldn't even, if I tried to wrap my arm around them, I couldn't touch my hand on the other side. And so by the time, you know, anybody who has ever met me in person knows that I may not be the tallest guy in the room. So <laughs> I climb all the way to the top and I've got my feet on the second to last rung and my arms, my nose is looking at the rung above and my arms are draped over it and I have to get up over the top and then come down the other side and i'm looking all the way down at the ground and it was ground was looking pretty far away and so i knew that the only way for me to do this was to literally jump up in the air and throw one leg over with just the right amount of force so that i could straddle the top and then slide down on the other side all about, I don't know, 50, 60 feet off the ground. To say that I was scared <laughs> might be an understatement. It, it, was, it was one of those kind of situations where my, my PT shorts could have been stained. I'm not sure. But the question is, well, first of all, the answer, yes, I did it. But the question is, how did I muster up the courage to jump up in the air and throw my leg over 60 feet straight up in the air? Was it because the drill instructors were yelling at me to get over that road? Actually, that wasn't it. It was the fear of looking like a loser in front of my peers. That energy was much greater than the, than the energy of my fear of dying. <laughs> So that's what got me over the top. I said, I cannot fail in front of all my peers. I've come this far and I threw my leg over and I came down the other side. Are you ready to launch your success in the land business? If you are, I want to tell you about the land.mba accelerator program. So many programs teach you theory and process, but leave it up to you to figure out how to execute. The Land.MBA Accelerator program is different than anything else out there because it doesn't just teach you what you need to know, it drives you to turn knowledge into action. Layered on top of our end-to-end -end land business essentials video course, the Accelerator is a six-week intensive small group course that goes deep on the most important topics like county selection, pricing, marketing, and more. In each session, you'll get specific assignments to turn what you learn into the right actions at the right times. So go to land.mba slash accelerator. That's land.mba slash accelerator and use coupon code podcast to get the accelerator plus a one year subscription to the land.mba mastermind program and 25% off all our other courses in our catalog for one year. Courses such as the Advanced Master Your Pricing course. You'll also get $100 off of Price Boss, the premier pricing tool in the industry. Our May session is filling up fast, but we still have a few seats left. So if you're ready to launch your success, don't hesitate. Go to land.mba slash accelerator today. So, but needless to say, my heart was pounding out of my chest. <laughs> And then I got to the bottom and it was one of the most thrilling moments of my life because whenever you conquer fear, it's this thrilling, thrilling experience, but it's hard. It's, it's really, it's really hard. Um, what does this mean in the land business though? Well, if you're doing a huge deal, let's just say that you sent out mailers and you sent out mailers for properties and you're paying, you know, anywhere, 2000, 3000, $4,000 for a property. Somebody calls you back and they said, well, I got this other property. And, uh, then you look at it and it's like hundreds of acres, you know, worth a couple hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is, but just numbers that you've never played with before. You're maybe you're not that new into the land business and you feel like, oh my God, this is, this is much bigger than I'm not ready for this. 
and the idea of putting your own money at risk. Maybe you don't have it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you get you you could get somebody uh, to finance the deal, but now you're going to be responsible for them making or losing their money. Yeah. And the whole thing just it, it it brings the 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 risk and the fear to a whole nother level. So it does happen. Um, maybe it's about sending out a huge mailer. You know, so maybe you've sent out mailers and a uh, hundred pieces here, uh, or, you know, a week, and now you want to go to a thousand pieces per week uh, because you really want to ramp up your business. Well, that is a huge financial commitment before you know that you're actually going to get any results, and it, yeah. you have to overcome fear to do something like that. And we we do get skunkers. You know, if you're in a situation where um, you you know you need to send bigger numbers out to get some deals, but you're not sure if you're going to get a deal because, you know, there are skunker mailers, you know, sometimes you, you kill it. And so, and sometimes it's just timing not to go out down another rabbit trail, but um, it's takes some guts, especially if you don't have very much money to go and put that money on the line for that marketing campaign that, you know, might come back zero. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. Um, continuing to make investments in the business before you hit the big, before you hit it big, and you've got the cash flow that you want. Um, being willing to make a mistake. Sometimes you have a quick example. Um, I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, but that's quite all right. But just an example of continuing to invest in your business that might be making a higher. I had an opportunity. Uh, oh, I had a situation that happened uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, maybe two years ago now, I don't know, but a while back. And uh, a person who had previously worked for me and had left now wanted to come back to my company. It was at a time, though, yeah, it was probably two years ago. Uh, it was at a time when I was really down cash flow wise. I was in a lull. I knew I, you know, I had some mailers I was preparing. I knew things were going to come back, but um, I couldn't afford to hire this person at the time, but I also couldn't afford not to, because it was a, a very key person that was going to help my business grow. So I did it. I mustered the courage to, to do it and pull from savings to pay this person. And lo and behold, you know, two years later, I'm in a whole, my business is in a whole different place. So just a good example. Yeah, no, that is a good example. Um, another example might be uh, selling a property to, on terms to a person that you might think is questionable. I've, I, I haven't done this, but I have. I know one of our clients has. I mean, I think the person was big in the marijuana business. The, 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 and I, I don't remember whether he was purchasing the property or selling the property, but there was, you know, he, so what he did is he put some controls into the process, into the, into the contractual process. And I think he, he sort of mitigated his risk, but it wasn't sort of the straight, okay, you know, yep. I'm selling it to you. You're buying it from me, and uh, I know who you are and what you're all about. It's fine, um, and it turned out it worked out for him. I mean, sometimes you, you just you take these chances. You know, maybe it's uh, doing a, putting a property into quiet title or something that you've never done before. Um, that it's going to put it put your money. Um, hang your money up for a while, um, but you think the payoff is going to be there. Um, everything is risk and risk is fear and risk and, and fear requires courage. So there, there are a lot of uh, examples within the land business or any business where we, you know, we have to, you know, face our fears and overcome them. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, be willing, being willing to make mistakes as well, you know, um, and so let's just talk a little bit about the level of fear and, and how it varies with personality. So we have different personality types. You have the analysis paralysis person, you know, that that is the person who um, a lot of times um, they they're so concerned about how that they they, they don't know enough. They think they don't know enough. And they have this fear to take action. So some of these people become course junkies because they think there's a, a magic bullet somewhere. So they just keep educating and they keep educating themselves. And that is actually a form of procrastination 
because of fear. And, um, you know, one of the terms that we use in our coaching business is uh, we want to push you out of the plane and make your push you out of the nest and make you grow wings on the way down. And that is I, I, I it's a stolen term. I didn't coin that phrase, but I use it. And you got to start taking action. Everything momentum and everything starts with with action. And so that takes courage, though. You got to face those fears and, and, and start taking action. You can't just overanalyze stuff. And um, and it's also part of part of that is learning the who, not the how as well. If you need some help uh, on doing something. And then there's the 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 swing for the fences person. This is the the natural big risk taker. You know, maybe this person can be too light on analysis, um, a, a low level of fear. Maybe this person hasn't experienced a mistake, a bad mistake yet. Maybe they haven't been burned yet. And so they. Uh, they naturally swing for the fences. Now, uh, you you kind of you want to have a, a a guarded version of fear so that you're not too loosey goosey, and uh, and go out there and you know, for example, you know, just I'm going to do this huge big plant, big big mailer, and uh, spend twenty grand on a mail campaign, but you didn't take enough care to take the right time to price it right and things like that. Um, then you have the the really naturally fearful person that that lacks confidence. They're afraid of risk. Uh, they don't necessarily overanalyze, but they think there there's a magic bullet out there. This actually is more the 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 course junkie, the person that tends to have shiny object syndrome. Dabble here, dabble there. Uh, they take every guru's course. Um, uh, and, and at the end of the day, they might spend more money on taking five different video courses than they could have on just uh, getting a mentor, uh, which that's another thing that can really help you with your fear. That, that person that can come alongside you and say, you know, at a boy or at a girl, you're doing it right. Just keep going. And um, so you got to have that courage to stay the course. I think when we get shiny object syndrome, I, I believe that that fear, lack of certainty um, that sort of drives that sometimes and and shiny object syndrome can be anywhere from okay you know this month i'm gonna try land investing oh it didn't work this month i'm gonna try uh e-commerce oh it didn't work we got to have the courage to stay the course and uh and, and do what's necessary to be successful absolutely um i find that courage is a, a very well <laughs> It's a very emotional proposition, and and there are different personality types that assist, that are associated with it, um, and those two in particular. And if you're a solo entrepreneur, uh, you may you probably only have one of those types, and so you have to understand yourself and have some self awareness and make sure that you are guarding yourself against either not taking action because of analysis paralysis or taking unnecessary risks because you're a swing for the fences person. I mean, I think the answer to most things in life is somewhere in the middle. I think we all want to take risks, but we want to take measured, carefully considered risks um, where, you know, they tend to, uh, to, to be, be at least more than 50% in our favor. Um, the challenge becomes when you're not a solopreneur, maybe you are in a small business, maybe your partner is your spouse, and maybe you and your spouse have very different risk profiles. Maybe you're the swing for the fences person, and your spouse is a much more uh, analytical person who wants to feel very, very, very confident before they make, make the move. That could be a challenge, or it could be an asset. Um, uh, it depends upon the, the relationship, and it doesn't have to be a spouse. This could just be any partner. Um, but you have to know that about each other, and you have to, you know, figure out how to use your differences to your advantage to help advance the right projects, um, as opposed to just fighting it out all the time. Um, I find that courage is very emotional um, because uh, it requires you to have uh, faith and confidence 
in your own abilities and in your process. Um, you know, we we've, we talk about this concept of fake it till you make it, um, and there is magic in that. There truly is, um, but it's not always easy to do. And when we th- when we think about like all those war movies where the the person finally says they, they get their gun out and they start running into the machine gun pit and they start firing and somehow they make a miracle happen. Uh, it's not a natural thing for a human being to run into a machine gun pit. I can promise you that. <laughs> I mean, I have had an M16 shot at my head from about 12 feet. Fortunately, it jammed. I'm still here. Um, but yeah, you don't want to be running into a machine gun pit. You just don't want to do that. Um, so what gets a person to do that? It's because it's emotional. It's because the cause is so great and the stakes are so high that you can kind of, your, your mind, you get tunnel vision and you don't see the world around you and you just see that one little mission and, and, and nothing else matters. Um, after it's over, you know, then you get into your normal P- PTSD routine. But in the moment, you act and you do what you have to do because it's, it's truly an emotional thing. Um, and, but, but emotionally, it could, also, it could also freeze you and stop you in your tracks. And this is where the mentor comes in because the mentor can give you confidence not just confidence that you're backed up by somebody who knows what they're doing, but the confidence that you know what you're doing and you're doing it right. Just stay, as, as Dave said, just stay the course. Just do it. You're going to be great. And if I see something, if I see you doing something that doesn't look right, I'm going to tell you. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to mitigate those risks hopefully before they happen. Um, and so it, it's, it's, a, it's a risk reducer, which is a fear reducer, which is a resistance reducer, which allows you to act in the face of fear. And that, that's, that's one of the really important roles of mentorship. Um, yeah. So that's kind of all I have on courage, Dave. I think we've covered it real well. Essentially, you know, to summarize it, it's to keep going and face your fears. Uh, you know, you, you don't don't overanalyze it. Just get in there and rock and roll. And if you need uh, if you need help, if you can't overcome that fear and you need some reassurance, you know, a mentor is the way to do that. That's in, in today's world. That is the best and fastest way to hack your success through a mentor. And so as that, and as Winston Churchill said, I looked it up. <laughs> Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So hopefully you guys uh, got a boost of courage and you're all ready to uh, take take the next risk to propel your business to a whole nother level of success. We thank you. Please uh, like, uh, rate, and comment up, uh, on our podcast on the YouTube channel. We really, really appreciate that. And we'll see you next week on the Land.MBA podcast. And go out there and get some deals. We hope you enjoyed this episode, had a bit of fun, and walked away with some actionable insights that you can apply to your business. Dave and I have got some great content and interviews planned, so don't forget to rate and review and, of course, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. If we mention any interesting links or tools, you'll find them in the show notes. To learn more about Land.MBA, visit our website at, wait for it, Land.MBA. See you next time on the Land.MBA podcast.